Hey, paper crafting friends. Thanks for joining me today. It's been a while since I've recorded a video, but I am feeling inspired this morning by two of the new Keeby Lane template sets and some lovely paper that I recently purchased um, with the plan of designing a class for this one, like a layout kit. So let me, um, let me tell you a little bit about these. So Kiwi has two new sets. They're called Briar Crescents, and then we've got Ovals. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw Ovals, I went, ah, are we going back to Creative Memories days? <laughs> uh, but once I started playing with them a little bit, I thought, oh, okay, they're really pretty. Um, and they do work so nicely with these Briar Crescents. These are a favorite. Take a look at these guys. They've got some nice little curves on them. This one I think would be amazing just around the corner of a big photo, like a big eight by 10. We've got this little guy, a larger one, and then this, and they all layer really well with the ovals. So like this size oval works great with that one. And this size oval works great with this one and so on. So it's kind of a fun set, uh, the way that they layer and I want to play with that a little bit. So my goal is to create a design that I can put together for layout kits that I sell at events that I attend. So if you take a look here at the back of the package, there's always some different ideas that are a great jumping off place. So without buying anything else, any kind of an idea book or anything like that, you've got a couple of ideas right off the bat. This here is what's kind of calling me at this moment. Now I'm gonna use this as a jumping off place. I'm gonna pull out my templates and do a little bit of designing and we'll see how it goes. So I'll pop right back on and show you what I came up with. Okay, so here we go. So similar to what I was showing you on the packaging, but a little bit different, I definitely like to include a lot of photos on my layouts. So I was able to get one, two, three good size, like four by six. And then I've got these are three and a half by three and a half mats. So that'll be like three and a quarter photos and then just a little three by four here. This area I wanna leave open. I've got a title I've been working on that I think I'm gonna create for this layout um, that I would be able to include in the kit that I'm creating, okay? If you stay tuned, um, I'll, I'll share that title with you if I end up using it on the layout. So um, if you're a Cricut person, it's gonna be a Cricut cut. Alrighty, so I ended up using Sunnybrook Lane, 2A and 2B for my borders. And then I've got one of the ovals. This is oval five of six, so it's the second largest. And then I used two of the Briar Crescent templates here just for a little, just fun kind of detail. So I'm happy with how this is spaced out. I, I like it a lot. Now, this is the paper that I am dealing with today. This is gonna be my main pattern paper. Maybe my only pattern paper, I'm not positive. When I look at the back, it's got a nice stripe on it. Feels a little like, like country farmhouse feel a little bit. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be designing around. I'm gonna pull some papers out of my stash and see what I can come up with as far as a color palette. And I'll share that with you before I get started with any tracing and cutting. All right, so this is the palette that I came up with. And I really just started looking at this and trying to figure out what my dominant colors were and then pulling those in so that I have lots of choices to work with. Doesn't mean I'm gonna use everything or that it's gonna be a lot of it on a page, but at least I've got a place to start, okay? So if you look closely at this paper, there is a lot of like a really deep 
almost a navy, but it's got a, a kind of a grayish undertone to it. And so I was able to find this beautiful paper. This is actually a close to, these are all close to my heart papers, but um, this is Harbor. And then that next one up is Mist. And I felt like that really tied in nicely with these sprigs and little butterflies that are on here. I've got this one, this is Seabrook. And so that, for me, tied in with like this kind of a color. That really closely matches the background. This one is Glacier. Then I had some New England Ivy. I felt like this one um, also works really well um, with these colors here. Pine would go well with this as well, but I definitely don't have enough of it uh, to turn this into a class. <laughs> And then I'm going to use white as my background to really pull out those, all those beautiful white flower details. All right. So now that I've got a palette picked, I've got to figure out what's going to go where. For me, I typically will start with my pattern and then kind of work my way out. So starting with this, I'm going to go ahead and use this for my border pieces. So I'm going to get those cut and then we can take another look and decide what our next layer is gonna be. All right, so, oh my gosh, I love this paper. It is so pretty and so fun. I haven't put the backgrounds underneath yet. Because I'm using white, the templates are gonna just blend right in with that and you're not gonna be able to see this as we're working through it. So I'll wait until the end to kind of layer um, and put everything on the white background. But this part being done, my next decision is, okay, well, what color do I wanna use next? I know that these are gonna be the New England Ivy. I want these sprigs to be green. Um, for me, they're, they're definitely a, like a floral plant kind of a piece. So I went ahead and cut those while I was off camera. So we've got that and that. And guys, this is exactly how I work in real life. I pick those, colors and I start doing one thing at a time and working my way out. It's just my process. So I think that the next thing I need to figure out because it's such a big piece is this oval. Okay. Um, and for that, like we know white is out of the question. Let me grab this palette again. I don't want the green white is out because that's going to be the background so i've got these guys okay um i really want that oval to pop and i feel like this is dark for photo mats i think i'm going to use this i think i'll use the harbor because i that's going to come off of here really nicely and then that green is going to look lovely on there so let me go ahead and get that oval cut and we'll go from there. All right, here we go. I didn't need the whole oval. <laughs> I left it open. And for me, it's because I want to get as many pieces as I can out of a page for these because I'm going to use this as a kit, right? So I um, will include the paper that people need and have enough space for them to be able to trace so i need to be able to show that they don't have to have that whole oval and that way another one can kind of loop this way if that makes sense so i'm going to layer that and then the green i'll pull that template out of there now that green briar crescent can just layer up there all right, so I know that's a little bit hard to see on the black. It won't be long. We'll need to get that white, those white backgrounds out. This is beautiful. I'm gonna wanna pull this color across my layout so it's not just popping up in one place because it is such a dark accent. So I decided to go ahead and cut the strips that I had envisioned here and here, okay? So that definitely gives me another decision made. Now, if you remember, on the back of this, it was this really fun stripe. So I'm thinking that that stripe would be a good choice 
for a little journaling card. So a little journaling card that I can put right here. That's just gonna work out really well for that. And then maybe I can use it in another place as well. So let me get that cut and we'll take a look. Alrighty, here's the journaling card. I love that. I did make it just a little bit smaller because I think I'm gonna wanna back it. If you think about how this is gonna look on white paper, that's, um, it's just not gonna show up enough. So we're gonna wanna put a mat behind it. So in looking at this, if you know me, you know that I like to carry designs from one page to the other so that there's just not some random element that isn't represented anywhere else. So I decided to cut a strip of that same paper, keeping in mind I have plenty. So you gotta, if you have this paper and you're gonna duplicate this, just make sure when you cut your borders that you're doing it in a way that you're gonna have uh, the stripes left in the right direction, okay? So I'm gonna slip this under here and that's just gonna add a little bit of texture to that. And then we'll still end up putting the photo mats right on top of it. So I'm liking all of this so far. So next decision has to do with photo mats and what color those are gonna be. So these are the colors that I have not tied in yet. Some I'm planning on using um, with the title that I'm gonna create too. So I think, let's see. Hmm. on the white, right? So there's a lot of decisions there. I do think so that the pictures really have an opportunity to pop. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. This is the mist. And I think that's gonna look nice and just be a little bit more neutral for whatever photos people wanna use on this. Let me get those cut and We'll move on from there. Okie doke. So, missed photo mats. Wait a second. I did cut these ones just a little bit smaller. I think I might have to push this down a bit for my title, so I wanted to have a little more flexibility in space. This one's a four by six. These are three and three quarter by five and three quarter, so I really just reduced them by that quarter inch. And then these are three and a half by three and a half. So I love how this is coming together. I haven't created this one yet, and that's because I wanna do something that's gonna tie in with this title. So while I was off camera, I went ahead and, and cut the title so that we could see what it looks like and then I can make a decision about this piece. So this is the title that I was working on and I just designed this on the Cricut. And like I said, um, I can share this cut file with you um, in the description for the video. I don't know if it'll cost you anything to cut it. I am not an Access member. Um, so the pieces that I chose to work with are ones that are from cartridges that I already own, okay? So if that makes sense. Um, if you're access, it may be free for you to cut. I'm, I'm really not certain, but I will put that in there. So this is what I was fearing is that this title, because of the size of it, is maybe a little bit large. So I'm gonna pop these all down just a little bit. Let me get those mats off the back. Pull some of these templates out real quick. That way I can bring it down so that that has its own nice little spot there. Okay, good. So all those colors are coming together really well. The only decision I really have left is some flowers to kind of accent, okay? And then what I wanna back this in. So as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that I wanna maybe pull in a little bit more of this glacier color into that photo mat because I think that'll be kind of fun to get that in there. 
So let me get that one cut. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the white out at this point. I'll put the white backgrounds in so we can see what this is all looking like um, finished. I'll get all the templates out so your next view will be a little bit more clean. All right, here we go. So this is laid out on the white backgrounds and I love how all of the colors are working together. Um, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I do want to do a sprinkling of flowers around. So I could absolutely use my templates to trace and cut flowers, but I already have a Cricut file that is ready that I had created for this title. So I am gonna just use flowers that are just like this. And what I did was resize some of them. So some are a little bit larger, some are a little bit smaller. Um, and I cut them in two different colors. So I decided to bring in a little bit of this softer, um, light blue here this is the Seabrook color and so I have a few little flowers that are that color and then I mostly did white because the white is what is on the paper that was my my inspiration paper so I know that I want a couple kind of along here so I'll have to think about exactly how I want to put these before I attach them, but I was just thinking that these light blue could just be a, kind of a little accent. So again, if you're not a Cricut person and you're a Kiwi person who uses their templates for everything, I am certain you can find some cute little flowers to use for this. So I'm just thinking something kinda, kinda like that to bring everything together. So I hope that you enjoyed kind of walking through this process with me today. I will add a few details along the way um, as I'm actually putting this together. The one paper I didn't show you, I did have a little, um, actually had a scrap of kind of a glittery, it's not really gold, it's kind of a yellowish color and that's what I used for these little dots here. So I'm debating on if I wanna cut more of those and maybe use them as some flower centers. I haven't made up my mind on that yet. So um, keeping in mind that whatever I do, I have to do enough of for the layout kits <laughs> for the class that I'm going to do. So we'll see. But um, I just wanted to share that one last little piece with you. Uh, use foam tape, elevate up where you can to give it a little bit of dimension and just have fun creating. I will put information in the description that shows where I got the um, all of the products. Close to my heart is almost ready to close down at this point, so um, we're all looking for another paper supplier, but as far as, you know, for the solids, but as far as this one, this is an Echo Park paper that I was just able to buy um, 12 sheets of, so. I hope that, uh, that you have fun creating and I hope that I see you on my channel again soon. Thanks for stopping by, bye-bye. <laughs>